I'm just going to preach Jesus to you today. Like it or not, I'm going to preach Jesus to you. Jesus is the light. He's the great I am. Amen. Let me talk to you on the back of your bulletin real quick. I'll go down real quick with number one, point number one. Listen to me carefully. One man came on a God mission. Somebody say a God mission. Somebody say a God mission. Jesus came on a God mission. The prophets prophesied thousands of years and said, this man will come. God told Satan right after he messed with Adam and Eve, so I got news for you, Satan. Read it in your Bible, chapter 3, Genesis, verse 15. The day is coming that the seed is going to bruise your nasty head. Come on, folks. That was the promise of the cross. Right there in Genesis 3, 15, he promised. You think you've had a field day? You messed up Adam and Eve, but that's not the end of the story. Come on, somebody. That's not the end of the story. May the devils mess with you. Maybe he messed up your life. Maybe he hurt you, wounded you. You might even been hurt in church. But that's not the end of the story. There's a new day about to happen. I got news for somebody. There's a new season that God's releasing upon his people that is amazing. So there's one man called Jesus. And he came on a God mission. And he constantly said he was born of a virgin. He was born of a virgin. No man had anything to do with it. It was supernatural. Somebody say it was supernatural. Supernatural. Watch this. He came born of a virgin, raised up in a carpenter's home, lived until he was 30 out of the photograph, He hid it back in the carpenter shop, but there came a day that John the Baptist announced, there comes the man that we've all been looking for. There comes the Son of God. Are you listening to me, church? I got a word for you. I don't care what you're facing today. Somebody's about to walk into your life. He's got the answer. His name is Jesus. Quit looking to some man. Quit looking for some person and just say, go ahead, Jesus. I'm here for you to do it for me. Jesus came on him. He said to him, I'm here to redeem the lost. I'm here to give my life for the lost. I'm here because I'm the only person that can redeem broken humanity. Nobody else could. He came with sinless blood, hung on an old rugged cross for a purpose, for a purpose. And I want to tell you something. I met Jesus in a personal relationship in such an intimate way. When God filled me with the Spirit at youth camp at 16 years old and called me to the ministry till it changed my whole world. It rocked my world. I mean, it changed my plans. I was going to be a multi-millionaire businessman. I was going to do all this stuff. And man, I just go on my way and the Lord met me around 11 o'clock at an old-fashioned altar at a youth camp in Oklahoma and said, Coy, I created you and I've called you and I've chosen you that you can take a microphone, speak to the lives of people and I'll bring a change into their life that man can't fix. Are you listening to me, church? I'm not here in my name, but I come in a name that's above every name. It's the name of Jesus. I'm about to shout, and I ain't supposed to shout. God said he'd do it for you. I'm telling you, my world was rocked. But then when my wife and my mother was killed in the car I was driving, Satan said, I'm putting you out. I'm taking you out. He tried to kill me in that wreck. That 18-wheeler pulled in at my door. If it hadn't have been for God, I'd have been the one that was killed. But God said, no, I want you to be in Loganville at Elevation Point. And I want you to tell people in the Easter of 2016, I'm still Lord. I'm still the mighty God. I'm still able to do above and beyond what anybody can even ask or think. 
But out of my pain, out of my confusion, I walked away from God. I moved from Oklahoma to Texas. In Texas, I never locked into a church. Nine months of my life, I was out of church, out of contact with God. At desperate times, I'd still say, Jesus, help me. But I wasn't living a life that I knew to live. But I walked into my little apartment. Never will forget the day. I walked into that apartment, walked to the bedroom. I'd gotten a letter from my pastor's wife with tear stains all over it. And it said, Coy, I don't know what you're going through, but I want you to know Sister Donaldson loves you. And no matter what you're going through, God will help you. I fell in my little lonely bedroom on my knees and I said, Jesus, I gotta have some help. I'm wounded, I'm backslid, I'm broken, I'm empty, and God, I can't help myself. And God came down to that little apartment, lift that house up like noonday, bathe me in the blood of Jesus, bathe me in the love of God, and that day to this day, I've been serving God on the highway to heaven and never looked back and said, devil, you're a liar. Whatever your attempt was, it's over. It's over. Second point on your notes real quick. Look at the second point. One cross changed humanity forever. Somebody say forever. He'll never be hung on the cross again. Never again will they take innocent hands and nail them to a rugged cross. Never again will they put a crown of thorns crushed on his head till the blood runs down his face. Never again will they mock him. Never again will they make fun of him. Because I'm telling you, when he hung on the cross, drew his last breath, he looked down the quarters of time and he saw Coy. He said, Coy needs a Savior. Coy can't help himself. Are you listening to me? You think you're all of that in a bag of chips? You're not. Are you listening to me? We have to have his help. Don't try to make it on your own when Jesus paid the price. I can't imagine the excruciating pain as he hung at Mount Calvary, the place of the skull, just above the empty tomb. I stood there many times going to Israel and thought, Oh God, how could you have loved me that much? How could you have loved me that much? And he said, I loved you while you were yet a sinner. Are you listening to me? See, sometimes we think if we mess up, we backslide, we do something stupid, how could God love us? Can I tell you, if he loved you as a rotten, low-down sinner, how much more does he love us when we stump our toes and make mistakes? The cross, the blood that we shed that day. Finally, just before dark, he bowed his head. He gave up the ghost. And he said three words, it is finished. That meant my sin is over. All I got to do is reach up by faith, take Jesus Christ into my heart. When I'm sick, all I got to do is reach up and say, Jesus, doctors don't know what to do with me. Please take care of me. See, it's that simple. We try to complicate it so much. God's saying, strip it back to simplistic gospel. Bring it back to the simple gospel. One man, one cross that he hung on changed our lives forever. My mind's been racing all day today because I've seen hard-hearted criminals, all kinds of people give their heart to Jesus. I've seen God change them instantly. I never will forget many years ago, a young man by the name of Kelly Turner. His mother come to me and said, Kelly has got to have help. He's a drug addict. He's shooting up. He's taking drugs. He's sniffing heroin. He's doing all this stuff. He's just a, 
he's just a young man and said now he's facing 50 years in the penitentiary of the state of Alabama. They caught him. They got the goods on him. The judge he's going before hates drug pushers. There's no hope for him. I took Kelly by the hand and I said, Kelly, the same Jesus that gave me life is in this room right now, Kelly, to give you life. I said, but it's your choice. You have to be sick of the drugs, sick of the sin, sick of the mess, are you? Kelly looked up with tears running down his face. And he said, Pastor, if you'll lead me to Jesus, I'll live for him the rest of my days. I took him by the hand. In a moment's time, Jesus ripped the drug addiction out of his body, ripped the alcoholism out of Kelly's body, ripped the powers of darkness off of Kelly's life. His little mother, little Methodist lady sitting there weeping. I said, Mama, weep no more. You got a changed boy. She said, but I'm sitting here thinking now he's saved. Now the presence of God's on him. He's going to the Alabama State Prison for 50 years. I looked him in the eye and I said, Kelly, lay your hand on my Bible. He lays his hand on my Bible and I said, swear to God, as long as you live, you'll live by this book. He looked at me, tears run down his face. He said, Pastor Coy, as long as I live, I'll live for Jesus and by this book. I said to Mama, Mama, get up, dry your tears. He ain't serving one day in the Alabama State Prison. I said, he's alive. I said, he's alive. You think I'm telling some far off story? That's one of my spiritual sons. He pastors in Kentucky. He pastored on my staff two different churches. He's been a pastor of the church in Kentucky for years. He penned a book called, We're Not Asking for Justice. We're Asking for Mercy. Because the day he walked before the judge, I walked in there with him. They put me on the witness stand. I turned to the judge with fear and trembling. And I said to him, Your Honor, we're not asking for justice. We're asking for mercy for Kelly Turner. He took his gamble back and he said, I sentence you to 50 years in the state of Alabama's prison. And he started to bring the gavel down and he stopped. He said, but for some reason, I'm now giving you to Pastor Coy Barker to see after your life. Somebody talk about he's alive. I said, somebody say he's alive. The God that changed him can change anybody. He never went back. He never had another drink, never had another dose of, of drugs. He never, he was totally changed, filled with the Holy Spirit and has been preaching the gospel ever since. Somebody say he's alive. Let me give you point number three on your notes. Point number three. One, two, destroyed Satan's power and all of his plans. Somebody say an empty tomb. Steel is a torment to the powers of darkness. They have to look at it all the time, and then all over the world, they're celebrating today Jesus is alive. I said they're celebrating Jesus is alive. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing. We come to church and we, we're afraid somebody's going to look at us funny. Folks, I want to tell you something. This is our celebration. This is our reason that we trust God. Because we know on Sunday morning, before daylight, Jesus got up out of the grave. But before he got up, he visited hell. Oh, the devil don't like this. Somebody got to hear him. He visited hell and he stripped the devil of the keys of hell, death, and the grave. And he could say, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Because I'm alive forevermore. The Bible said he made a parade. See, I have a child like mine. I see him grabbing the devil by the nap of the neck. 
dragging him around, saying, you think you're all that and you're so tough? Look at here what Jesus just did. And the Bible said he got up that day and he was seen of over 500 people that he was alive. It was such an impactful moment till the disciples would give their life to testify Jesus is alive. They said to Simon Peter, if you don't deny Jesus Christ is a Messiah, the Son of God, and that he got up on resurrection day, we're going to hang you upside down. He said, get your cross upside down because I'm not denying. Can somebody hear me in the house? This is your moment to say, Lord, I want you more than I want anything else. Would you bow your heads, please? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Every eye closed, nobody moving. This is a God moment. This is a holy moment. This is a moment where your sins can be forgiven. Your failures can be put under the blood. Who I feel victory for somebody. Somebody in this room, you struggled and struggled and struggled, but you made it here today. God said you crossed over the threshold into his arms of power. This is your moment. I hear the Holy Spirit. There's several of you that this is your day of a life decision. I want to pray for you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I promise you. I'm not going to embarrass you. But God honors a reacher. When you lift that hand up, God's going to be watching. He's going to be longing and reaching for you. And he's going to take you by the hand. And I'm going to ask people all over this room. You say, Dr. Barker, I'm here. I'm not right with God. Coy, things are wrong in my life. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm an honest person. I'm not living a facade. I know I'm wrong. But would you pray for me today? I really want to get the junk out of my life. I want to get the sin out of my life. I want to get Jesus as the Lord of my life. And today is my day on resurrection morning. You say, I'm here. I'm here by divine appointment. God brought me here. You need to realize this is the appointed moment for a change in your life. Just like God changed Kelly Turner forever, God's about to change you forever. His grace, His strength, His power is going to help you. All over this room on a count of three. When I count to three, you're here. You know things are not right in your heart. You know in your heart you need to make things right with God. I want you to be man enough, woman enough, be a young adult with courage and say this is my day to get the blood of Jesus to cover my life. All over this room. One, two. Hands are already starting up. Hold it up high. Three. Hold it up high. Yes, 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 yes. Don't be ashamed. My God, Jesus paid the price so you could have freedom. Hold it up high. Unashamedly. Hands are still going up. Up, up. Hold them up high. Unashamedly. Things are wrong. I want to get it right. I want to get the junk out of my life. You may take them down. I want every person in this room to stand, please.